Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. After the end Permian extinction event, life on Earth changed rather radically. The formerly dominant large synapsid suffered heavy losses, with most megafaunal forms dying out. Although the widespread bulky dicynodonts would survive, along with the increasingly mammal-like cynodonts, synapsids were far from the dominant force that they used to be in the new Triassic paradigm. The real beneficiaries of the great dying, however, were the diapsid reptiles, which had previously been relatively minor players in Permian ecosystems, generally being small and lizard-like animals. With a variety of new niches now open to them, diapsids diversified explosively during the early Triassic, producing a whole host of sometimes bizarre and highly specialised forms, much as the placental mammals would later do after the KPG extinction event. One of the oddest and most distinctive elements of this radiation were the drepanosaurs. Appearing quite suddenly during the Middle Triassic, these were highly specialised and generally arboreal animals, with many anatomical features being convergent with those of modern chameleons, such as prehensile tails, grasping clawed hands, and probably insectivorous diets. However, instead of possessing projectile tongues, Drepanosaurs tended to have narrow, pointed snouts that were superficially bird-like in some cases. Fossils belonging to this lineage are known exclusively from the Northern Hemisphere, and despite several species having quite complete remains, their identity and relationships to other diapsid reptiles is constantly in a state of flux. The group have been variously considered as archosauromorphs, lepidosauromorphs, or stem diapsids of some kind. Most recently, Drepanosaurs have been placed as members of Neodiapsida, with Adam Pritchard and colleagues classifying them as the sister group to the gliding, lizard-like Vegeltisaurids. If this hypothesis turns out to be correct, then it would help to give us an idea onto how these bizarre animals evolved. Seeing as the Vegeltisaurids originated during the late Permian, and were also arboreal insectivores with pointed snouts, it is plausible that they and the Drepanosaurs shared a common ancestor that was probably a small, generalised and arboreal lizard-like creature. This would still leave a substantial ghost lineage for Drepanosaurs, extending back into the Permian at least 260 million years ago. The Vegeltisaurids were novel and unusual in their own right, proving similarly difficult to classify. The group was native to the late Permian of Eurasia and Madagascar, being small, lightweight, gliding reptiles, superficially similar to the modern Draco lizards. Their skulls were narrow and pointed, equipped with tiny pin-shaped teeth and cranial ornamentation consisting of short horns and tubercles, which were probably utilised for display purposes. To aid in their specialised lifestyle, these animals also possessed light pneumatised skeletons and grasping toes useful for clinging to vertical tree trunks. The gliding membrane was distinct from that of other gliding reptiles, which are often modified ribs originating from the upper lateral surface of the body. In contrast, in Vegeltisaurids, the rods originate from the lower lateral surface of the body, possibly being extensions of the gastralia. The furling and unfurling of the gliding membrane was likely controlled by the abdominal muscles. Preserved fossils show that the bony rods had a high degree of flexibility similar to the ribs of living gliding lizards. Four definitive genera are known, all from the late Permian and varying little in appearance, with one being named after the dragon Glaurung from the Silmarillion. They appear to have been victims of the end Permian extinction event, probably being too specialised to survive in such a global drastic cataclysm. During the Triassic, other gliding diaps such as the Cuneosaurids would emerge to fill a similar ecological niche. Meanwhile, their probable closest relatives, the Drapanosaurs, first appear in the fossil record roughly 230 million years ago during the Middle Triassic. Among the most basal members of this clade was the genus Hyperonecta from the late Triassic of New Jersey. A small animal measuring just 12 centimetres or 4.7 inches long in life, Hyperonecta was initially thought to have been a semi-aquatic animal due to its remains being found in former lake deposits and in its possession of a long, paddle-shaped tail with tall neural spines. However, this is now thought to be incorrect, with the chameleon-like body proportions of the animal indicating that an arboreal lifestyle was far more likely. It has also been proposed that Hyperonecta may have been a gliding animal as well, with the limb proportions being similar to those of modern patagia-bearing species, such as flying squirrels or sugar gliders. 
However, as we currently lack any complete specimens of this animal, its true life appearance and ecological niche remain mysterious. Another older genus, Cugisaurus, was the most ancient and probably the most basal of all drapanosaurs, being the first member of the group to be described from Asia. Although known from a single fragmentary specimen dating to approximately 230 million years ago, this genus was notably less derived than later members of the group, resembling a modern agamid lizard in terms of appearance, indicating that all drapanosaurs probably evolved from ancestral forms similar to this. The later Triassic genus Valesaurus functions quite nicely as a transitional stage between basal lizard-like species and the more derived chameleon-like forms. A tiny animal measuring just 15 centimeters or 5.9 inches long, Valesaurus was native to Italy during the Norian stage of the late Triassic. It was also clearly an arboreal animal, although its skull was notably shorter than in the more derived drapanosaurs and the prehensile tail tip lacked a distinctive hooked spine. Valesaurus also possessed a high tooth count, while more derived members of the clade showed a marked reduction in tooth number. Beyond this, all other known drapanosaurs are members of the family Drapanosauridae. Although this group is often thought of as being strictly arboreal, some forms may have taken different evolutionary pathways. The genus Ancystronychus from the late Triassic of the southwestern United States possessed a greatly enlarged hooked claw on both of its front feet, which differed in structure from those of its relatives. Measuring around 50 centimetres, or 1.8 feet long, its claws were distinctly wide and shovel-shaped, bearing strong similarities to those of modern pangolins and anteaters, suggesting that Ancystronychus may have been partly fossorial. Another drepanosaurid, Skybalonyx, from the Chinli Formation, possessed similar claws and may have also been fossorial as well. However, the most famous and well-studied of the Drepanosaurids belonged to the subfamily Megalancosaurinae. The type species of this group was the genus Megalancosaurus from the late Triassic of Italy, a fairly small animal measuring about 25 centimetres or 10 inches long. It was built like a chameleon and probably lived a similar arboreal lifestyle, feeding on insects and other small animals. Even its feet were chameleon-like, being well suited for gripping branches and climbing up trees. The tail was long, prehensile, and bears a strange claw-like organ made of fused vertebrae at its end. Its shoulders formed a withers that would have served as an attachment site for especially strong muscles. Meanwhile, the skull was superficially very bird-like, with large orbits and a slender narrow snout containing tiny pin-like teeth suitable for grabbing insects and other invertebrates ripped out of tree bark. A very similar, albeit larger, genus was also native to late Triassic Italy and gave its name to the entire order, Drepanosaurus. Also present in the Chinli Formation of New Mexico, this was the most massive member of the group, measuring over 50 centimeters or 20 inches long. It would have resembled a reptilian tamandua or pangolin and probably lived a very similar lifestyle being a slow, deliberate climber that fed on small insects up in the trees. The recently described avicranium was even more derived than unusual, with a completely toothless beaked snout and large forward-facing eyes. Scans of the well-preserved skull of this animal have revealed an enlarged brain, likely being an adaptation to an arboreal lifestyle, as such a niche requires advanced sensory processing, such as depth perception and three-dimensional navigation. It is very likely that these features convergently evolved with those of pterosaurs and modern birds, which would require similar sensory processing during flight. Despite their incredible specialisations, drapanosaurs would ultimately die out during the end Triassic extinction event, alongside the Dicynodonts, most non archosaur archosauriforms, and many lineages of terrestrial pseudosuchians. Throughout the remainder of the Mesozoic, no other animal group inhabited a remotely similar ecological niche, and it would not be until the Cenozoic when similar forms would emerge in pangolins, anteaters, and true chameleons, respectively. If nothing else, the drapanosaurs do demonstrate the sheer diversity and oddness of life that can appear in the wake of a devastating mass extinction. Thanks for watching, everyone. The next episode will be covering the Anomodont synapsids, which include the famous herbivorous Dicynodonts. See you again soon. Cheerio.